name is Ronnie Decker. I'm a registered nurse, and this is Nursing Analysis. Today, we will be discussing bathing. Bathing is a task that will promote health and provide social interaction, relaxation, and pleasure for the client. Promoting relaxation and comfort will enhance well-being and improve self-image. The nurse uses this time with the client to strengthen the nurse-patient relationship. Bathing can stimulate the depth of the patient's respirations and also provide sensory stimulation. The blood vessels near the surface of the skin will dilate and increase circulation related to the friction of the bathing and the warmth of the bath. It will remove perspiration and bacteria from the skin surface, which helps to prevent body odor. We must utilize our nursing judgment when determining what type of bath to give a patient. We must also consider the patient's preference, their self abilities, their endurance, and the medical plan of care. We will now discuss the different types of baths that can be given to a patient. First, we have an assist bath. In this type of bath, the nurse will assist the patient with areas that are difficult to reach, such as the back, feet, and legs. Next is the partial bath. This bath is used to cleanse areas that may cause odor or discomfort, such as the axillary and perineal areas. This type of bath is not as stressful on the patient as our next type of bath. The complete bath. This is given when the nurse assesses the need for the entire body of the patient to be cleansed and the patient cannot assist. We must also discuss the need to bathe the patient in the bed. This is done when the patient is either physically incapable of getting out of the bed or if there is a medical necessity or order for them to be on bed rest. Some patients may still be able to perform the bath or assist with the bath. For these patients, the nurse will assist with the setup of the supplies for the patient and allow them to perform all of the bath or allow them to complete what they can and assist in completing the remaining areas. We will now discuss the four types of bed baths that can be completed. There is the prepackaged bath, which is a commercially prepared and packaged pack with pre moistened disposable washcloths. The towel bath. The nurse will place the towel and bath blanket in a plastic bag. The nurse will then add a warmed, pre prepared commercial mixture to the bag. The nurse will then bathe the patient with the moistened towel and blanket. The solution does not require towel drying. This method is considered time efficient and is preferred for patients who have mild to moderate impaired skin integrity or activity intolerance and for those patients with dementia. The bag bath. This includes washcloths moistened with water, either sterile, filtered, distilled, or a pH balance no rinse soap. Each section of the patient's body can be cleansed with a different washcloth as 8 to 10 cloths are included in the bag. This reduces cross-contamination between highly soiled areas and less soiled areas of the patient's body and can assist in reducing the risk of infection. Another type of bath is the basin and water bath, 
We will discuss the procedure for performing this type of bath later in the video. This bath includes a disposable basin with added water, washcloths, lotion, and a pH balanced no rinse soap or chlorhexidine solution. This type of bath is used for patients who are soiled with large amounts of blood, body fluids, or excrement. Basin and water baths are considered to be a potential risk for healthcare acquired infections. The basin can become a reservoir for microorganisms. We must consider when bathing our patients with tap water to follow up with a chlorhexidine solution to assist in eliminating any bacteria that may have collected as the water lines and plumbing can accumulate bacterial biofilm. Now let's talk about showers, which are usually reserved for ambulating patients. This form of hygiene can save time and refresh the client. Usually limited assistance is required for these patients. Some ambulatory clients who suffer from stiffness of the hands and arms can benefit from a tub bath. Immersion in water helps to soak crusty, scaly areas that are soiled and can relax stiff muscles and joints. We must provide safety measures for the patient, including handrails, a shower or tub chair, and a non-skid surface. Some tub baths can provide mechanical lifting to assist the patient with mobility difficulties into and out of the tub. We must always put safety considerations first when interacting with our patients. We must remember, prepackaged bath products should be used when possible instead of basin and tap water baths as to minimize the risk of healthcare acquired infections. If we do use a basin and water bath, we should use sterile or distilled water or we can use a no-rinse pH balance cleanser with an emollient to protect the skin and prevent excessive drying. Chlorhexidine gluconate 2% is used to decrease bacterial colonization and should not be rinsed off the patient. Do not use chlorhexidine on mucous membranes, face or perineal areas. Now discuss how to bathe a patient using a basin and water. We must remember this type of bath is used when the patient is grossly contaminated or if there has been refusal of other methods of bathing. We need to consider our equipment. We need a disposable water basin for single patient use. We need either distilled, filtered, or sterile water per facility policy. We will need a chlorhexidine solution that can be used on the patient and the basin to reduce the risk of infection from contaminants. We will also gather lotion, deodorant, bath blanket, clean gown, clean linen, and gloves. We will conduct a pre-procedure assessment and if appropriate delegation to the UAP can be established as long as we inform the UAP about the patient's limitations, accessory or assistive devices in use such as IV lines, drains, walkers, canes, or prosthetic devices. We must remind the UAP to report any unusual findings and how well the patient tolerated the procedure. We will provide adequate supervision and support before, during, and after the procedure. We begin the procedure by identifying the client using two identifiers. The procedure should be explained to the client and we need to obtain the patient's permission or consent before performing the procedure. We will utilize standard precautions. Unless the client is infectious, 
and then we will utilize the appropriate transmission-based precautions. For the purpose of this video, we will assume the client is not on these specific precautions. We will perform hand hygiene and then apply gloves. We will provide patient privacy and uphold patient safety measures. We will utilize proper body mechanics. We will use warm water at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, but never higher than 115 degrees Fahrenheit. We should check the water temperature with our hand or a thermometer. If possible, ask the patient to test the water temperature. Remember, water that is too hot can cause injury or remove the skin's protective oils. And water that is too cold can cause the client to become chilled. We can add 60 milliliters of chlorexidine to approximately 3 quarts of water. This will keep the basin from becoming a reservoir for bacteria, which will decrease the risk of the patient developing a healthcare acquired infection. We must make sure we adjust the bed to a comfortable height. We will remove the bedspread and lay the bath blanket over the sheet. The sheet then can be removed from under the blanket. We can now remove the gown while making sure the bath blanket covers the patient's body. We must remember to only expose the area being cleansed. Using a clean washcloth, we will wash the client in the following order. The eyes, face, ears, and then neck. Then we move to the chest, abdomen, legs, feet, back, and buttocks. Lastly, we wash the perineum and rectum. We must remember to rinse and wring the washcloth as we proceed from each body area. We must change the washcloth and water before washing the perineal areas to prevent cross-contamination. We will rinse all body areas washed with soap and pat the skin dry. Never rub to avoid abrading the skin. Apply deodorant and or lotion per the patient's preference and as needed. We will place soiled linen in the appropriate bags and avoid placing the linen on the floor or allowing it to touch the nurse's clothing. Help the patient put on a clean gown and offer a back rub unless contraindicated. Reposition the patient for comfort and protection of skin integrity. Change all linens and send the soiled linens in the appropriate bags to be cleansed. Clean and dry the basin and store the basin upside down in a plastic bag or per agency policy. Do not place any items in the basin. It is now time for some fun. It is time for our Rhyme Time Review. We shall complete the task of giving a bath, pleasuring the client with social interaction, providing relaxation and satisfaction. Bathing and breathing have a relation as it can enhance respirations and oxygenation. The blood vessels we will rate as they increase circulation and dilate without hesitation we remove perspiration. When this is completed, we will be able to tell as there will be no malodorous smell. We must also take reference to the client's bathing choice and preference. We may just help with what areas are missed. This type of bath is known as assist. Providing what the patient may lack, washing the legs feet and back. The next type requires a different path.
Cleaning the axillary and perineal is a partial bath. And when the client is unable to compete, we utilize a bath that is complete. Remember the rules when using water from a tap and the microbes the water can trap. Remember the products we are wasting and never store them in the basin. Make sure the water temperature is correct. Use your hand or a thermometer to check. And all over the skin, we must inspect. Thank you for taking the time to learn with nursing analysis. We will continue our basic nursing care series in future videos. If you have any suggestions for topics or ideas for videos, please leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to show your much appreciated support. Since nursing began as a profession, nurses have been on the front lines of guiding positive change for patient outcomes. Today, nurses continue to bring innovation and compassion to patient care that profoundly impacts human health. At Medical Prep Institute, we work hard to bring innovation and compassion to the classroom so that we can support your success in school and in achieving your career goals. We can guide you to achieving the skills you need to positively impact the lives of your patients. So contact Student Services today for enrollment information.